um, is the fact that there's been huge criticism, right? What they're saying is that this uh, prison was hugely overpopulated. Mm -hmm. It was massively understaffed. And of course, Rishi Sunak, I mean, he gets the blame for everything, quite frankly. So now his defo is going to get the blame for this. But are we under uh, investing in our prisons? Yes. The, I mean, that's a general well, that's thing. That's the end of that debate, then, everyone. Yeah, should, we to, should we just go to the break? I'm going to tease him. Go but on. That, that's a general situation in the country, right? Primary school roofs, school roofs are falling in. Prisons have not got enough staff to make sure that prisoners aren't escaping. You know, the list goes on and on and on. So we are suffering now from years and years of underinvestment. Anyone knows who owns a business, if you underinvest, it leads to consequences. Anyone knows who lives in a house, if you underinvest in it, you get bad consequences. The same thing is happening now. And the prison service is one of those pressure points where the failure to invest is leading to big problems like prisoners escaping. Well, I'm going to say something unpopular. What? I, I, I'm going to say that I think we send people to prison, too many people to prison, and we send them for far too long. Oh, Daniel. <clears throat> and, um, and it doesn't do any good. And then when we find the prisons are heaving with people, uh, like we've got 3,000 IPP prisoners mm -hmm. in jail at the moment who shouldn't even be there, um, and that, that's out of 80,000. That's quite a significant chunk of the estate. Uh, and they shouldn't even be there because those prison, those prison sentences have been found to be illegal. Um, uh, and, and we send people to jail and everyone is demanding longer and longer sentences like it was America. You know, we'll be up to the 150 year sentence uh, before we know where we are. Um, and that's a big change in our sentencing policy over the last 30 or 40 years. And what has it done us any good? It's certainly filled the prisons up. It's certainly made them harder to manage. Um, and it certainly means that we are, um, you know, we're seeing the problems we're seeing. I'm not saying one escape. I mean, in any prison system, somebody will escape from time to time. And, and, and you can't have 100% total success in keeping people locked up. I remember some big escapes from when, when I was young. Um, so somebody will escape. It's wrong. We should catch... We normally do catch them when somebody escapes. I don't put too much weight on that. But the fact is, we don't want to pay for the prison system we have, and we don't want to say... Well, but we do want to say, lock them up, lock them up, longer, longer, longer. So we've got to make a decision, which is it going to be? Do you want to pay for that or not? Yeah, I'm happy to pay for that. Yeah. I'm happy to pay for... I knew you uh, would be. Yeah, I, I did say to the I producer, am. you know, Michelle and I won't agree on this. Yeah, I'm absolutely happy uh, to pay a little bit more tax if you could guarantee me that what you're going to do uh, is invest it in law and order, in particular, in taking people off the streets that, quite frankly, have got no business being there because they don't know how to behave when they're on them. Uh, these IPPs that you mentioned, we debated that the other day and a few people were not happy with me. Um, uh, someone was watching, actually, that is connected to an IPP. I think she was a family member or something. And they reached out to me on Twitter and said, uh, Michelle, you need to get um, uh, in touch with us and, you know, we're going to talk to you about the miscarriage yeah. of justice. So, you know what, you've just prompted me. I I must take them up on that offer because I should. Uh, I'd be fascinated, actually, to learn a little bit more about that. Just to give you some uh, stats before I go, uh, 86,000 prisoners. Of course, you won't be surprised uh, to know that they are mainly uh, men. The, the most uh, popular age category for being in prison is 30 to 39-year-olds. You've got some people in there over, over the age of 70. Uh, apparently, uh, in the year 2021 to 2022, there was 54 prisoners released in error which caught my eye, I think, how on earth do you release somebody accidentally? What's that all about? Um, 20, about 23,000 uh, prison staff uh, in Perth at the moment. Uh, apparently 14.1 uh, days was the average working days that were lost um, to sick. And I'll tell you what I found quite interesting. In fact, actually, I'll, I'll turn this way. To you, Laurie, life after prison, these are the government's uh, prison stats, life, life after prison. Only 4% of prisons achieve their target for employment mm. at six weeks following release. And get this, only 17% of prisons accommodate a target for accommodation for first night um, release. So you're out of prison right. night number one, have these people got somewhere to go? So I, I think this links to Daniel's point. I agree with him about... Uh, how we shouldn't have as many people putting, being put into jail um, necessarily in the first instance. Why? I think that it would be a big mistake if we are moving towards America. And in some ways, I think it does feel like that. Because there are... Now, let's be very clear. That doesn't mean a blanket policy of saying, oh, well, we need to suppress numbers. It means being very clear about specific areas of crime and understanding if jail is the best and first thing to be done to deal with that crime, to to deliver justice and also to hopefully rehabilitate. So this is, the, those stats that you just read out to me there, 
if, we, if we've got the problem of putting people into jail, we then of course have the problem of what happens when they come out of it as well. Mm. And that's another problem with rehabilitation. And so I genuinely agree with what Daniel's saying. There needs to be a better process where we think, let's strip it right back. People have committed crimes. There are a multitude of crimes with different levels of severity. We need to deliver justice. And we also want to rehabilitate these people so they can be functional and useful back in society as well. Mm. And that, one, that sometimes means that they probably shouldn't even go to jail. But I, I believe in prevention, really. So, yeah, yes, rehabilitation, yeah, lovely, sweet word. Let's all hug uh, prisoners and high-five them and all the rest of it. Wonderful. But I would like, actually, to be tougher in the first instance, particularly on, um, like, minor crimes and things like that, because I think, actually, if you have a zero-tolerance, no-nonsense approach to the smaller things in life, you might actually find that you then prevent people from going on and committing the more serious crimes that would see them locked up for longer and all the rest of it later on down the line. Mm. But there is a soft burn in my body, Daniel, because I do believe that once you've served your time and all the rest of it, I would like you, and I think it's better for the general public if you are reintegrated into society, particularly into work. And I think there is a stigma uh, around uh, employing people with a criminal record. And I think it's made very hard for people that have got a criminal record to actually get into employment. Is that right, do you think? Yeah, it is. And there's uh, at least one um, high street chain which... Um is associated with a charity which uh, deliberately sets out to employ people. Timpsons. Yeah, which employ... Yeah, exactly. Fabulous. Which, They're fabulous. Um, to employ people who've come out of prison. Um, and there's, perhaps there should be more of that. Um, and that is a really good um, thing for people to do. But I will just say generally, if you want to train somebody for employment and help them to be a well-integrated member of society, you will not achieve that in prison. That is a very, very strange way of going about that task. But that's why in I practice. said in step one, yeah. I believe in, in step working one, prevention. You lock them up for 30 years or whatever it is, 20 years, with a whole load of people who we know, and especially you put people in for short sentences, we know that all they do is it makes them more criminally minded, they get exposed to more criminal people. Even the terrorists get yeah, exposed to more... Yeah, finally on the street sentences. Even the terrorists and, get... And I'm not saying we should lock up then. dangerous terrorists, but even the terrorists just get exposed to more terrorism. Um, and, and then you say, well, now, now we would like, was, if we'd like you to come out and be... Confinement. We'd now like you to come out and train to be a, a lathe turner or something, <laughs> um, you know, and, and be a nice, respectable member of society. It's a very odd way of going about it. We've got it all wrong. Do you think? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You guys can You also be... got to remember, prison is quite a modern idea. It's a very Enlightenment, late 18th century idea. People were never locked up before, um, before then. But well, what did they used to do with them before then? They either hanged them, uh, they either hanged them right. for stealing sheep, or they branded them, or they fined them, or they cut something off. Put them in the stocks. Putting them, or putting them in the stocks. But prison uh, is, is a very deliberate and conscious invention of a bunch of liberals like Jeremy Bentham in the very late 18th, early 19th century. Um, and, and we've had 200 years of it now as, as a means of uh, part of our criminal justice system. And, um, and it's not now working. It ceased to work. I'll say one other thing, talking about long on, sentences, then. very, really quickly. You go back to the time when we had hanging for murder, OK? A lot of people who were found guilty of murder weren't in... They were all sentenced to be hanged in court, mm. but many of them were, were then... Um, what's the word? It was remitted to a sentence uh, in jail. The Home Secretary intervened and they were let off the sentence. Do you know how long, on average, people served for murder if they weren't actually hanged? How? Mostly how they were out in 10 years. Right. This idea that you're, you're in jail for 30, Every day is a 40 school day years. With Lord Moylan, isn't it? I love it. You, you're in jail for 30 or 40 years. Most of them, if they weren't hanged, they'd be sent to jail at Her Majesty's ple His Majesty's whatever pleasure, and then most of them would be out within 10 years or so. Wow. And, and, and because they were judged not to be that, that dangerous. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just harsh. My uh, experience comes uh, all the way back to when I was a teenager. I used to live a very different life to the life I le lead now, Laurie, I'll tell you. Right. And I spent uh, my weekends, was in and out of prison, visiting my then partner. He was in and out of prison like a yo-yo, so yeah. he was. And I've got to say, uh, I think he quite liked it in there. All of his mates was in there, he used to get fed and watered, he used to go to the gym and all the rest of it. And I never used to feel like he used to come out uh, and be punished. Although well, they probably came home to me, that was probably uh, punishment enough. But anyway, that, uh, that is probably uh, where some of my sentiment comes from.